our good friend Jason Lockenford. GLC, good morning. What's going on, buddy? Not much. How you doing? Hey, it's busy. Can't complain. Real busy, obviously. Patriots lose a lot of players thus far. Do we expect them to plug some of those holes through free agency, or will they look ahead to the draft solely to save money? Well, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't avo uh, ignore the trade market either, where Bill Belichick has long been at the forefront of that. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're often better off doing something via trade than you are overpaying a lot of these mediocre to slightly above mediocre free agents who, how many of these guys are really in, in this team sport going to make um, a significant difference, and how many of them will even be with their current teams, you know, 12 to 18 months from now? History says not many. So, yeah, look, they've they've lost some talent there, without a doubt. They've got some holes on that roster, but they'll pay Gronk and he'll stick around. Tom Brady has still to this point proven to be Tom Brady. Bill Belichick, still Bill Belichick. They kept Josh McDaniels, where I think losing him would have really been a massive blow because they don't have a next man up on that side of the ball. There weren't a whole lot of attractive options out there as offensive play callers. Bill Belichick can't do everything. Um, you know, and, and we'll see. Obviously, this is going to be a critical draft for them. Um, but I, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to put the, you know, the dagger through their hearts. I, it, uh, I'll, I'll believe – that they're done competing for Super Bowls when I see them being done competing for Super Bowls. Sure, and that's understandable. You are not buying, though, then the Gronk retirement talk. I, I mean, I buy that, that he's playing that card. I don't think that's going to actually happen. Um, you know, I, I just don't foresee that being the case, especially when they, they're going to throw more money at him. I mean, the WWE is going to be there in a year or two years or what have you. The chance to win another Super Bowl with Tom Brady isn't. So I, I think this is ultimately uh, about a negotiation and not a retirement. Jason Lockenfora joins us here on the show. Doug Baldwin tweeted that he hopes that Kirk Cousins' deal, which is three years, all of it guaranteed, becomes a new normal. Is there any way that mm. this opens up that as a reality, not as a new normal, but could we see more of this done, complete contracts all guaranteed? Well, you're going to see more people asking for it. You're going to see more people inquiring about it. Uh, and it will be something that's brought up. I mean, it happened. It's real. It's a new threshold. And kudos to Kirk Cousins and his agent, Mike McCarthy, for, for establishing this, this uh, goalpost. I don't know, though how easily it's going to be achieved. We're talking about a quarterback who perennially ranks in the top, you know, five to ten in most key statistical categories for the last three years, who's been a multiple pro bowler, um, who has no off-field issues whatsoever, who got franchised twice in order to reach this point and now hits the market, you know, well before his 30th birthday. That's, you know, doesn't happen all that often. And he had a fight and claw and played through two franchise tags for it to happen. I mean, how many quarterbacks even reach the point where they get franchised, first of all, much less franchised twice and then get to leave because the other team has gone and signed a guy who's seven years older than him for about the same money. Good point. Uh, you so, you know what I mean? I, I think, D.A., at the end of the day, it opens a, 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 a new door. It cracks it open a little bit. I don't think it kicks it wide open, and I still think Kirk Cousins – you know, is going to be an anomaly. There's not 32 Bruce Allens and Dan Snyders running NFL teams. So it took a lot of mismanagement on the Redskins' side to even reach this point. They could have had him for three years, 19.5 a year, the first time they franchised him, which meant he'd still be there on a three-year, $60 million deal and not getting $84 million guaranteed from the Vikings. And, by the way, getting to hit the market again at age 32, where if Alex Smith gets $27 a million, Twenty-seven million a year now at age thirty-six. What's Cousins getting three years at thirty-two? Outrageous. Yep, absolutely outrageous. Do you think that Kirk Cousins is a significant upgrade at quarterback for the Vikings? I think he's a significant upgrade at quarterback to what the norm has been there. But Case Keenum had a hell of a year last year. Right. I mean, he did. He protected the football like he never had before. He made big boy throws and big boy plays down the field to multiple targets. And, 
what did he have, 25 touchdowns or something like that? So, I mean, I, I, I would expect that Cousins' numbers are better. I guess the question will be, ultimately now they have to win a Super If they don't win a Super Bowl, then this was a bust. And if Case Keenum remains a highly functional quarterback at 18 a year, so Keenum's going to make at most $36 million for two years in Denver, although I suspect he's traded by this time next year if he plays half, half decent in 18 because they're going to draft a quarterback in Denver who they think will be ready by 19. But you're talking about $84 million for Cousins over three and 36 for Chase Daniel over two. Is he going to be $50 million better than Chase Daniel over a three-year window? I don't know, you know. Who, who, assuming Case Keenum is anything like he was last year, who besides Aaron Rodgers, you know, and maybe, you know, Russell Wilson would be $50 million better than Case Keenum if Case Keenum keeps doing what he did last year. Mm. Jason Lock and Fora joins us, CBS Sports NFL Insider. Jordy Nelson released by the Packers. Jimmy Graham brought in by the Packers. Is that a good swap for Aaron Rodgers when it comes to weaponry? We know how good the relationship was between yep. Rodgers and Jordy. I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't rock that boat. And a lot of people around the league who are now interested in Jordy Nelson are surprised because they, even though he's a declining Jordy Nelson and he's getting up there and he doesn't run like he used to, um, nobody thought he was going to hit the market because – I shouldn't say nobody, but a lot of people I've talked to did not think he would hit the market – precisely because of that relationship between the quarterback and him and the fact that Rodgers is coming back now at this point doesn't have his his new big-time contract yet and that's his guy and he wants to have one more ride with his guy and he is the franchise and the GM is a rookie GM who was promoted from within and a lot of people didn't think would would be willing to rock the boat like this and I don't even know that Jimmy Graham is better than him I mean even I mean they both can catch you know five to ten yard Touchdown passes around the goal line. Um, neither one runs like he used to, but I don't know. I mean, I don't. Uh, Jimmy Graham was not very impress- impressive at all to me in, in Seattle, other than, you know, like he started catching touchdowns in the second half of this year, but he wasn't dynamic. He wasn't exploding through seam routes. He wasn't beating defenses deep. Um, you know, he can still go get a jump ball a little bit, but I, I don't know, man. When you factor in the human element, I don't know that that's a net gain. For the Packers, and I don't know that Jimmy Graham's days of being a straw that stirs the drink on an offense are here anymore, even with Aaron Rodgers. So, I, hmm, I wouldn't have done it, frankly. I mean, it's ballsy, and and maybe maybe their convictions will be right, but uh, I, I wouldn't be, you know, picking fights with Aaron Rodgers right now. Where do you think? Where is there the most interest for Jordy Nelson right now? Uh, I think uh, he has plenty of, of opportunities. I mean, you've, he's, in, he's in Oakland right now. Um, you know, that's Reggie McKenzie, who came from Green Bay and knows him well. Seattle's GM, John Schneider, same thing, came from Green Bay, knows him well, thinks very highly of him. Seattle lost Paul Richardson. Seattle lost Jimmy Graham. Seattle doesn't have a ton of skill guys to begin with, so I would think they're not going down without a fight on this one. Um, the Baltimore Ravens have added a couple of wide receivers on more or less prove-it contracts, but they still have a desperate need for, for some sort of a, a proven playmaker on offense. I can't imagine they're not involved. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there'll be a nice market for Jordy Nelson. And, and, look, Oakland hasn't done anything yet with John Gruden there. So do they, you know, just decide we're not letting them leave the building? Adrian Peterson released by the Cardinals. Is this it? Yeah. Will he find another home or will he retire? That's over. I mean, he may. <laughs> Who cares? Somebody may, somebody <laughs> may give him a, you know, somebody may give him a million bucks to try to make their team next year, or two million. But I don't think he'll make the team. This is a good crop of uh, of running backs in this draft. It's a young man's position. Um, two teams, well, what now? Three teams in a period of uh, ten, nine, ten months said no thanks to him. Uh, yeah. Goodbye. So he like- wants to play in Houston. That's cute. I, <laughs> hey. I want to play on the moon. <laughs> Do you think it's a risk for the Packers to bring in Muhammad Wilkerson? No. No. I mean, one year with a chance to earn a max of $8 million on an incentive-laden contract, uh, I don't. I think Green Bay would be a great environment for him. It's a defensive court. That's the funny thing about Muhammad Wilkerson. All the people who really know Muhammad Wilkerson wanted him, right? Kansas City was all over him. Their D coordinator, Bob Sutton, K 
came from New York where he was drafted. He goes to Green Bay. Their D coordinator, Mike Patton, was in New York when he was drafted, worked with him, knows him well. Ask Rex Ryan what he thinks of Muhammad Wilkerson. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I know that there has been this sort of campaign out there to smear this guy and turn him into some kind of, uh, you know, monster. It's, it's the, the, the narrative doesn't fit the reality. And this is a guy who was the Jets' highest-paid player who had chronic shoulder issues and played on a foot that was more or less mangled for the last two years. He needs to grow up. He needs to be more mature. He needs to, to make sure he's at every meeting on time and every treatment on time. And there's things that he's done that haven't helped his own cause. But he, he, go back a couple of years and go look at your PFFs or any of these evaluators and look at D tackle slash D ends. And the only guy who outperformed him for about a four-year period of time was J.J. Watt. And he's going to be hungry and motivated, and it's a different culture in Green Bay and I think him and Mike Daniels and some of those guys up front, I, I think it's going to work real well. Him on natural grass in a place like Green Bay, I, I, I bet he has a big year. Mm. Jason Lockenfora, he is a must-follow right now on Twitter for all the latest on NFL free agency at Jason Lockenfora. Read up at CBSSports.com as well as they've got a completely covered wall-to-wall. And JLC, we're only a couple weeks away from Orioles opening day, my Ooh. man. Yeehaw. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Baseball season almost here. Always. No, I love baseball, but I'm I'm not very enthused about the uh, 2018 Orioles. Oh, man, you're usually the optimistic guy. You're not even ready for baseball, huh? I mean, I'm ready for it, but I'm just I'm all, I'm a realist. Their 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 window is passed. Oh, that's devastating to hear. Yeah, you sound all torn up about it. <laughs> Well, I like when you're happy about the Orioles. I mean, I hope they prove me wrong. Look, go play a bunch of the, the bunch of kids who I watch come up through the minors who I think are pretty good. Trade Machado, you know, trade Brad Brock, and you know, stop pretending you're anything other than who you are. Which you're, you're the Tigers right now. You're the, you know, you're a lot closer to the tip they raise than you are anybody else in your division. You need to start acting accordingly. The cold, stiff hand of reality, Jason LaConfora. Boom. On the table, joining us here on the show. JLC, good stuff, man. Thanks. You got it, buddy. Have a good one. You Thank too. You. Jason Lockett for joining us this morning on the show.